<laughs> Regular listeners probably have lost count of how many times the Gray Report has covered Yarny Matrix monthly <laughs> multifamily research publication. But number one, it is an excellent detailed report. Number two, the market's always different. Yeah, it's the same report, but they're going to be talking about uh, a lot of difference. And, and that's how I wrote this, especially in a transition year like 2022. Following the changing trends of the multifamily market is extremely helpful. Uh, really, well, well, really valuable. They took, they picked a great uh, skyline to feature. Yeah, it is. That's a beaut. Ooh, man, that's a good stock photo. Yeah, Indian, um, it's Indianapolis. <clears throat> uh, I think top of the charts this month. Yep, it, it's been going around the uh, the LinkedIn's and, and such. For sure, and and it's been about a few months. Um, yeah. uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure how how long it's going to stay in, but it is a virtue oh, yeah, of its stability for... and its continued stability. Will uh, uh, you know if history is any guide? It, it, it's not going to rise and fall with the volatility of markets like Phoenix. Well, it, it's more of like when I get the questions, you know, because again, like I was talking to investors all last week who know us from Indiana and you know people from the international investors too, people from who did not know what Indiana yeah. was and weren't sure what Chicago was. And so I'm like, well, if you haven't heard of Indianapolis, then do you know where Chicago is? Like, if I'm talking mm-hmm. internationally, that's usually the line of the conversation yeah. goes. But um, but to so many people are like, where are you? You know, where are you investing? Like, I'm in mm-hmm. Indianapolis, and they're like, Indianapolis, what's going on? Why, why, why should yeah. I invest there? And it's like, well, last week, least I'm like, well, did you know Indianapolis is like top rent growth in the nation year yeah. over year? And they're like. Interesting, and and I like that. I like this that fact too because of just what I said. It's like not only is it a, it, it's on the top for a reason, and it's not a reason because people just are happening to move in. It's because of its has this history of stability, and like it's like they said in this um, in this. Uh, articles is Indianapolis is still among the least expensive of the major metros, and uh, yeah, it's one of the handful of markets, really less than a handful, where rents have continued to increase. Um, their numbers for rent growth. This is the first month where Yardy Matrix has had a negative month over month rent growth at negative 0.5 percent for November 2022. Year over year is still at at seven percent, um, but Yardy Matrix is detailing the same economic context that we have covered uh, just earlier here. We've got uh, a little bit of inflation, a little bit of interest rates. Uh, But in their interpretation, the current slowdown is a correction from a level of of rent growth that would be unsustainable under optimal conditions. It is not, they say, unexpected, nor is it necessarily a sign of a deep recession. So this is like, yeah, this is the drop of the water that you know, the water is yeah. coming up now and it's going down and, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's reaching a, a level of equilibrium. I would say a little bit of a, uh, you know, this is normalizing, moderate, <laughs> moderating a little bit of a cool down, but it is a reaction to 20% rent growth. You yeah, know. exactly. It's like what comes up, comes down. I mean, yeah. look at, I mean, any type of, you know, technical analysis, it's like, you know, it's, there's usually a, a reversion to some sort of mean and the mean can move, but like, uh, and the proof is what, what we've mentioned before is a lot of the high flyers are the ones that are having the most anemic growth currently. Yeah. So you look at the past, you know, huge rent growth in the past, and now it's a little bit, and that's, what's really dragging this rent growth down if everyone was steady like indianapolis <laughs> maybe things would be different but it's it's true i mean yeah i mean in really month over month i mean there's only really two markets in the country that are positive yeah. month over month indy and new york city which yeah. you know new york was negative all of 2020 mm-hmm. there's another and part of 2021 and yeah. indianapolis was positive one of the few markets that were positive during 2020 mm-hmm. and, and again that's that's that was part of the conversation i was having last week with a lot of these family offices is that in high talking about Indianapolis is that you know there's a consistent theme of being able to get through an economic uh, economic downturn yeah. in relatively unscathed. Mm-hmm. You know, 2008 affected everything, all asset classes, all real estate, but yep. Indianapolis was nothing, anything like a lot of other markets. Mm-hmm. wasn't nearly as bad. Um, pandemic, Indianapolis was on top. Some of the least amount of job losses. So mm-hmm. from a jobs point, very positive. And then from um, a rent growth perspective near the top. I think we were number four in the country um, in 2020. Yeah. Now, similar, 2021. We are number one, number two, certainly in the top five of rent growth, regardless of where you look. Um, that That's a consistent trend of resilience. And you know, there's a handful of other Midwestern markets that are in there as well, like um, Kansas City um, that has been doing well as as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing Cincinnati on this list of month to month. 
um but they typically do pretty well as well columbus again just a lot of other midwestern markets are just a little less volatile Mm -hmm. um, but still have um really good growth and also, you know, there have been some adjustments to, you know, um, some of the census projections. So population growth is actually mm. projections have ticked up in a lot of these Midwestern markets mm. as well. And so, you know, the counter argument against the Midwest um, would be, you know, you don't, they don't have the growth that the Sun Belt does. Um, but, you know, there's still a decent amount of growth. And it's maybe not as much as in Atlanta or in Austin. I mean, it, yep. Indy, Indy's never going to be in Austin. It's not going to be in Atlanta necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um but that that's okay, and that's where I think it's much more niche tactical opportunity. Yeah. But um, well, and and riches are in the niches. And yeah, <laughs> the I think it's worth in, emphasizing like that these are affordable markets as well, and that could be a big driver and and. Sh- Maybe not a driver of rent growth, but certainly a uh, a driver of kind of stability, like this backdrop of stability because it's so affordable. Yeah. You you would expect people to to be able to uh, sustain themselves and to live in you know and and to not uh, and to not be pressured like some of the renters or uh, homeowners in other in other markets in other states and stuff. Agreed. Um, just looking at renewals, um, you know, unsurprisingly, you know, renewals have started to come down a little bit. You know, this is for you know, existing residents um, re-signing a lease. Um, you know, they were, you know, still the rate of renewals are still high. I mean, the renewal rates, I mean, the mid '60s in the past, um, our average would be about 50 percent. Um, you'd assume 50 percent would leave, 50 percent would stay. Um, the fact that we're kind of still '60s, you know, Baltimore 70, Indy 64, Sacramento is basically 60. Um, that's really strong, and then the the um, increases are also quite um, quite high. You know, really in these this top uh, fifteen or so, um, you know, kind of ten to twenty percent renewals. Um, that would be huge organic rent growth because yeah. again, typically on a renewal, you're only increasing like two or three percent. Um, so I think that this is the one we're going to see this continue to a point until more rents are caught up to market. Yeah. Um, but I think that's going to be an interesting story where a lot of the growth is going to be coming from getting these older leases back up to market, yeah. not as much on pushing market rents. Because I think there's a there's a feeling of, all right, we, we push market rents so much in 2021. Mm-hmm. Let's just kind of get everybody else up there. Let's take a pause. We're getting rents um, significantly higher than we thought we were going to be right now. Mm-hmm. So let's be happy with that. Now, expenses are rising also, and that's the other thing that's like, you know, rents are only one side of the st- story. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got your you got your revenue, but then you got your expenses. And, you know, utilities, you know, we've talked about energy being cheaper. Utilities have not gone down anytime soon. Utility yeah. costs are just tough. Payroll, it's not going down anytime soon, especially when you want the right people. Um, you have to pay up for the right team, and nothing can improve or completely throw a wrench in the gear of a business plan is not having the right people in the right place. Mm-hmm. Um, not to mention labor and, or in, in other types of materials that are just more expensive. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a challenge trying to see positive NOI growth well, that's what I was, without organic growth. So in CBRE's multifamily section, they project 4.3% rent growth, but they also project 4.1% inflation. So you got 02 yeah. That's not a lot of point. <laughs> nope. No. Uh, um, but yeah. Um, so uh, the uh, the other thing that I wanted to note, and this is for uh, for avid readers of this report, if they scroll down to the uh, rent to income chart that that uh, Yardy Matrix you know uses to kind of track affordability. Um, Kansas City and Indianapolis used to be like specifically and reliably at the bottom, but I think that there was some shakiness in the reporting this this week. Uh, specifically, you're looking at Atlanta, Denver, Dallas, and Chicago, and they have an average that is much lower than what I think should be. Um, do, do you think again this comes back to you know how they're calculating? Um, a renter by necessity and lifestyle units. And because it's interesting, you know, renters by necessity was renters by necessity versus renters by choice. And I think lifestyle units, luxury, renters by, it's kind of the same thing. But with the rising cost of mortgages, you're just having more and more people who are still doing pretty well, but they're yeah. just they're, they're they are a renter by necessity, and they may still may want to live in a lifestyle unit though. That's yeah, where maybe I don't, there's I don't a know why. there's a higher weight to the renter by necessity now. But again, like here, I'll use an example. If you scroll down to, um, I think that that's Chicago. 
no, Dallas here. They say Dallas that the average rent to income is 21.7, but on the other hand, the renters by necess or the rent the lifestyle renters have a 32.7 rent to income ratio and a and the the, the renters or in by Denver, yeah. So, oh, that's Denver. I'm yeah, sorry. No, no, but it's, it's the same story. So ha, I guess so. You, for <laughs> lifestyles, 32 percent. For renters by necessity, it's 29 percent. So how's your average? 27, 21.7. 21.7. Uh, I think there's I, there's got to be something. So is that like including affordable? Because like certainly it's not an average between these two. So what are the other categories? Is it um, affordable units? All I'm saying to I am telling readers if they read this thing, what the last four things I would put an asterisk on and and say maybe those don't belong there. Where where it starts getting true, where it starts making sense to me, is at, at Kansas City, where 24.6, that seems reliably between 23% and 25.7%. So that starting to make sense right yeah, there. Yeah, like Indy, Indy, you know, renters by necessity, 274 and lifestyle, 245 which is higher than the last report we looked at. So the average is 26. Okay, yeah, that that, that makes a sense. That makes sense between 24 and 27. Yeah, 26. Um, but Baltimore, but, yeah, I don't get it. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, Baltimore... Um, for renters by uh, for the lifestyle renters, thirty five percent. That's cost burden. Anything over thirty percent is cost burden. Thirty three percent for affordable units, but their average is twenty five. Um, I may have to contact the already matrix. We're gonna have to contact the already matrix. Yeah. 